Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Fuel to Pursuit, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can prepare your lungs and legs for exertion at altitude, even if you live at sea level or some altitude that is between sea level and where you're going to perform. All right, so as you can see behind me, we've got the Rocky Mountains. Uh, this particular range has a few 10 to 12,000 foot um, peaks. And I live in Virginia at a whopping 600 feet of elevation. Um, so when I come out west to uh, go backpacking, to go hunting, to do any of the cool stuff that we love to do in the outdoors, the lack of oxygen at high elevations can be very problematic for us. So as you can see in the chart here, as we go up in elevation, there is an incremental drop in the oxygen that is present at that elevation. Um, as we get to a mile high, 5,000 feet, um, you know, there's even less oxygen in the air. So we're doing the same physical exertion that we're used to, but we're getting less oxygen with every breath. So our performance can go way down if we're not prepared for that. And the higher we go in elevation, 8,000, 10,000, 14,000 feet, the more that that lack of oxygen is going to negatively impact us. Um, the higher we go, it's, so it's not a linear relationship. The higher we go, the more it impacts us. And what I wanna teach you today is a breath hold technique that helps us increase our CO2 tolerance and gets us acclimated to less oxygen uh, being, in ava being available and in our bodies, okay? Um, and, and the important thing to note here is that this is boosting our CO2 tolerance. It is CO2, carbon dioxide, that actually drives air hunger and drives us to breathe. It's not that we need more oxygen. So if we can create uh, or, or train our bodies to elevate that CO2 threshold, not only will that help us perform at higher altitude, it will actually help you perform wherever you live, compete, train, hike, whatever you do, because you'll have that higher CO2 tolerance and you'll be able to perform at a higher level of your capacity with less need for oxygen, okay? So what that's really gonna translate to is you'll run faster 5Ks even in your hometown if you do what I'm about to teach you, okay? It's really cool stuff. So um, this is from the Oxygen Advantage uh, Masterclass. So I gotta give uh, credit to Patrick McEwen for this. He's got a great book, check it out, The Oxygen Advantage. Um, if you want more stuff like this, we also have a lot of these techniques in our course. Uh, but what we're gonna do is two different sequences of five breath holds. So you'll do 10 total holds. Five of them will be what we call a preparatory phase and you will just be walking while holding your breath. And so that's phase one, first five breaths. The second five, I'm sorry, first five breath holds. The second five breath holds will actually be the altitude simulation. And on those, we're going to, while holding our breath, walk until we start to feel air hunger, and then we are going to walk faster or jog, all right? So I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit of what this looks like. Um, what we want to do before every breath hold is take that normal breath and it's going to be four seconds in through the nose, six seconds out through the mouth. And then we're going to pinch our nose. And in the prep phase, we're going to walk 10 to 15 paces. And then we're going to let go of our pinch. And then we will take normal breaths for about 30 seconds. And on those normal breaths, you don't need to count the cadence. It doesn't matter if it's four in, six out. Just control your breathing and make sure that it stays in and out through the nose. The important thing here is on all of these holds, we're not pushing our body to a point where we have to gasp for air after the hold, okay? So we're gonna go five rounds of that prep, right? And again, the prep is 10 to 15 paces followed by 30 seconds rest, standing in place, breathing normally, okay? 
After those five, now our body is prepared for the longer holds and kind of more intense exertion. So from breath hold six to 10, what we're gonna do is the same, you know, breathe in, breathe out through the nose, pinch your nostrils, and now we're gonna walk maybe five, 10, 12 paces, depending on where you are uh, with your breath hold practice and your own CO2 tolerance. Whenever you start to feel that air hunger, we're going to push it a little bit more. We're gonna either increase the pace of your walk or you're gonna start jogging. And then at the end of your breath hold, you're gonna let go of that nose pinch and we're gonna take six small breaths, right? You're gonna resist that urge to take a deep breath as soon as you let go of your nose. We want minimal breathing for six breaths. They'll be pretty shallow, okay? Um, and then after those six shallow minimum breaths, then you're gonna breathe normally for about 45 seconds to a minute, and that will be one round. And again, we're doing five rounds of that, okay? So as you do the minimal breaths, that is probably where you will feel the most lightheaded. Um, I actually like to do this practice at home, either inside or I do it outside. Um, either way, when I finish that breath hold, I like to be in a place where I can either put my hand on the wall, put it on a column outside, um, grab something that is sturdy, just in case we get a little bit lightheaded. Um, I like to push this tolerance as high as I can. Definitely want you to be safe. Don't pass out. Don't push yourself to that point of having to gasp for air. As long as you're not having to gasp for air, you're gonna be okay. But that little bit of kind of queasiness or lightheadedness is gonna be that CO2 threshold that we're building. And that's what we want. We want to feel that and we wanna push that higher and higher, slowly and gradually over time. Do not try to go from zero to hero on day one, okay? Realize that this is a practice and that the more you do it, the better you'll get at doing this. Um, I don't do this all the time. I usually wait until about a week before I go on my trips, and then I will do it three to five days um, during that week leading up to the trip. Um, and I've noticed that in as few as three sessions of this, the week before a trip, I have a huge positive impact on my ability to perform at altitude and elevations like what you see behind me, even though I'm coming from sea level, right? And I know this is going to work for you too. So try this before your next trip, um, especially if you're somebody that lives where it's flat or you don't have elevation, and then you're going to a higher elevation. So let us know how this goes for you. Let us know in the comments. Click the like button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you get an alert every time we drop a new video.